Hello! Welcome back to another video on the Volvo Sleeper Build, proudly brought to you by eBay. All right, guys, I'm running, I'm running out of hiding spots. All right, there, there's only so many places you can hide in a thousand square foot shop. I'm gonna have to get a ladder and really start to get creative. In the last video, we made the hot side for the turbo kit. Here's our 7875 turbo over here eBay manifolds in this custom fabricated bit by yours truly. Now in today's video, we are going to be making a intercooler system. Now this, this might look like a strange intercooler. <laughs> I gotcha. This might look like a strange intercooler and that's because this is a water to air intercooler instead of an air to air intercooler. Pretty much this is a normal intercooler. There is an intercooler section in the middle here, but instead of air traveling through it to cool it down, there is water traveling through it to cool it down. Now the main reason we're using one of these is for the sleeper look. If we had to use an air to air intercooler, we'd have to mount it somewhere up front and we could use a black one, which would hide it pretty well, but it would still be visible. That's not the only reason why we are using this though. For one, air to water intercoolers are significantly more efficient than air to air intercoolers. This thing's pretty small, right? Well, this thing is rated for a thousand horsepower. Another benefit of it being so small and it being mounted in the engine bay is that there's a lot less charge piping, a lot less volume to fill, and thus less, less, uh, less, I almost said less spool, less lag, more spool. We'll pretty much just have a pipe coming off the turbo into this and then straight into the, uh, the engine. Now, in order for this thing to work, you have to cool off the water going through it. There's two ways to do that, really. Number one, you can have an ice box mounted somewhere in the car, or number two, you can have a heat exchanger for this. Pretty much have its own radiator. Ice boxes are great for drag strip specific cars that just wanna have the coldest intake temps possible because you put a bunch of ice in it, and it's really cold and you go do a pass and then you fill it up with more ice. However, this is going to be a street car. We're gonna take it on long road trips. We're gonna drive it on the street a lot and we don't wanna be constantly filling it with ice or anything like that. So we have a heat exchanger. So let's go ahead and get started. This is gonna be a learning process, which I love. And it's gonna be a challenge, which I love. I'm gonna build the mounts for both the heat exchanger and intercooler off of the radiator. So the heat exchanger, the intercooler, and the radiator will be able to come out as one piece, which will be nice and easy. So heat exchanger goes on the front of the radiator, kind of like so, and then we'll deal with that afterwards. Someday I wanna have a big enough shop where I can just have a huge supply of consumables and parts that I use in every build. You know, a bunch of AN lines and AN stuff, a bunch of different types of metal. So I can just not go to the store for like a month. Also, I was just featured on a new show that Koenig Wheels is making called The Hype is Right, where we talk about cars and whether they're overhyped or underhyped and such. You should go check it out. Coding Wheels is an awesome sponsor, so let's get them some views on this video. So here we are, let's test it. Radiator's right there, heat exchanger fits perfectly, and it is awesome. Oh! 
polish. Ten percent. Here's ten percent. Ow! What? Classic. In a cooler mounted on one side, radiator mounted on, or heat exchanger mounted on the other. Now, it's definitely a weird choice to put the intercooler on the radiator or close to the radiator. There is about an inch gap. And you know, I would have rather put it somewhere else, but there's nowhere else to put it. And we're gonna heat wrap the intercooler and this heat exchanger is, good, is huge. I think it'll be fine. If it's not fine, then uh, I'll own my mistake and fix it, but it's gonna be fine. Well, since I built the mount outside of the car when it wasn't in the car, uh, I put it a little bit cl too close to the battery tray and I had to modify that, but it fits. And, and you know, it looks like a intercooler stuck between two really hot things. <laughs> Good thing it's efficient. Yeah, so radiator, intercooler, charge, or not charge pipe. You, you, know, you know what this is. Turbo, turbo thingy. Turbo thingy. It's gonna be okay, all right? Just trust me, you know? I. I know I do a lot of funky things, and a lot of times you doubt me, but have I ever screwed up besides putting a wastegate on wrong, all right? Have I ever made any other big mistake? Pretty sure the answer is no. No one believed the truck was gonna stay together. It, it sits together. No one believed the rally Miata was gonna stay together. It's together. No one probably is gonna believe that the intake temps are gonna be reasonable. They're gonna be reasonable. <laughs> We're going to ceramic coat the headers and we are going to heat wrap them. And then we're gonna do the gold reflective tape and big heat exchanger. So remember, we're cutting this off doing a cast 90. This one is gonna go into the bottom hole. So this will go kinda as close to the motor and then swoop over there. And this one just goes straight up into the throttle body. Now I don't have the cast 90 for the turbo, but I can start working on that top uh, intercooler pipe. In order to make this tight of a turn, I'm gonna need to use some pie cuts. If you don't know what pie cuts are, it's pretty much a way of cutting a pipe so you can make a sharper turn. Uh, and I don't know the proper way to make them, but this is how I make them. So we have this three inch aluminum pipe, courtesy of eBay. And you can tell there are a bunch of lines on it, right? This first line is directly perpendicular to the way that pipe is traveling right there, you know? On the other side of that line, I make a line that kind of goes sharper angle into the pipe. And then I come down and make another line that's sharper into the pipe, the other direction, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to be cutting these sections out and these sections are what are getting removed. If you look at the pipe and imagine what it would look like without those sections, it would just be a tighter turn. That's how I make pie cuts out of pipe. Now you can buy pre-made pie cuts, which I'm probably gonna start doing, but uh, I don't have them right here, right here, so I'm gonna make them. Aluminum is a uh, aluminum is a really soft metal. So the belt grinder I have actually um, aluminum is a really small metal. Oof. Aluminum is a really soft metal. So the belt sander I have actually works and can flatten it. Look at this beautiful freaking gap. There's zero gap. It's totally flush throughout the entire pipe. Ugh, it makes me so happy. Very just satisfying. Ooh. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Well, there she is, ladies and gents. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
Nine different pieces of metal in there. That was time consuming, but man, it was kind of fun. It's like a puzzle. You can rotate each of those nine pieces in a different way to get a different result. It's kind of, it's kind of sagging because it's just being held up by tape, but uh, it's pretty much perfect. Obviously we have to have a four inch to three and a half inch, or I think it's four inch to three inch adapter there. First time I've ever used that many pie cuts. First time I've done like a little squiggly thing like that. This feels awesome. I mean like everything I'm doing is something new. I love it. Well guys, I am super, super happy with the way this turned out. It's all welded up and uh, it works great. Welds turned out pretty dang good. I love welding aluminum. This aluminum was surprisingly really good quality. And now we gotta put our blow valve on, on this bad boy. We got this nice tile blow valve that's definitely 100% legit. It's not a knockoff, of course, but it's gonna work fantastic. We just gotta weld the flange on. Unfortunately, I spoke too soon about the aluminum quality because the quality of the aluminum flange for that blow-off valve was complete garbage. But I welded it and it's uh, it's sealed. It looks like poo-poo, but that's all right. What doesn't look like poo-poo is the, this pipe in general. It looks so freaking cool. I mean, this is gonna be so awesome. I can't wait to see this thing totally finish. It's kind of crazy and kind of weird. Kind of like a not really a good setup, but like this is like the only way I could think of doing it and it looks sick and I think it's gonna work pretty well. Seeing the intercooler there swoop in with the exhaust coming right under it, it's it's cool. It's really cool. Look at that. That is freaking sick. See, I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, it's an LS swap. They're boring. I don't, I don't watch LS swaps, but this is not your everyday LS swap. Everything is custom. Everything is unique. Never done before. I mean, I know people have LS swapped 240s, but this is unique. And I'm learning a lot through it. So that's, that's all that really matters. The only thing I'm really worried about is fans on the radiator, because we're just putting so much stuff behind the radiator, because that's the only place it can go, that I don't think we're gonna be able to fit like a 12 inch fan on there. Or I think we're gonna get like one 10 inch fan on the back, and I think I can fit like two 10 inch fans on the heat exchanger blowing in. And I'm hoping those three fans will be enough to keep it cool. You know, the fans only have to do something when the car's not moving. This is a pretty huge and efficient radiator, so I think, I think it'll be fine. Anyway, that is going to be it. In the next video, we are gonna go ahead, do the waste skates, the waste skate dump, and hopefully that last remaining uh, intercooler pipe. After that, we can do the fuel system, then the wiring, and then start it, then take some things back apart, get it uh, all, powder coated and stuff and, and it's done. <laughs> We're getting close. I think my goal is to get it running and driving by the end of December. Stay tuned guys. If you wanna watch the next video, you can head over to Patreon and watch it. And of course, if you need to get any car parts or fabrication parts or anything, head over to eBay. And there's a link to that in the description as well. Thank you all so much. Hope you have a great day. Peace out and goodbye.